Hi, welcome to another episode of the Sankofa Pan African series. And what kinds of challenges are young people of African descent who are trying to enter into various fields of uh, science and technology likely to face today? What I think, they will still have the same challenges. There will still be ageism, there will be sexism, there will be racism, because it's human nature. And human come with our own biases, gender biases. So they'll still be faced with some of that. They'll still be faced with the pay gap, where the black woman might work with less than the black man or, or, or the other woman of another race. They'll still be faced with that. But what, what has changed now is that there are a lot more opportunities. You're not socialized to do a degree and apply for a job. You're not socialized to seek an opportunity where somebody has to pay for you. Technology has opened the door for you to create your own opportunities to create your own solution, to do your own invention, to create your own company. Like I have a friend in, in Dubai, he's Nigerian and he has a company and he's hiring people from all over the world, Eastern Caribbean, Latin America, and he, he's the CEO, but is a virtual company. So hmm. technology has opened the door, whereas that would have been closed because you didn't know anybody in that world. You didn't feel like you were part of that network. You're no longer that. You go online, you do your research, you, you get your data, you, you, you get your qualification, and you have a solution, you have a suggestion, you create an app, you go forward. What I think is very useful at this time, we saw the world grapple with COVID, as well as a global uprising of the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. Now, Black Lives Matter movement also impact technology field, because you will find because of systemic racism, certain jobs, there are very few black people in this job. So less than 7% of Americans black are in the field of ICT across the board, from the lowest level to the highest level. So now you, you, you're knocking on the door saying, hey, we're going to crush this door because we're entering with or without your permission. And what is useful for this timing as well is that the time is right. Because of COVID, leaders, lawmakers, uh, policymakers, who are much more skeptical about digital transformation and the fourth industrial revolution because they have seen the world has gone online now. More and more people are open and ready to listen and take action. So there may be challenges for the young people, but I see there's so many more opportunities mm -hmm. to just jump on board and make yourself relevant and create opportunities. Like I've shared, uh, one of the wealthiest guys in the world is a Nigerian, a, a British-born Nigerian yes. who created software fund artificial intelligence so even if the systemic racism still exists there are opportunities for you to shine if mm. your skill set is so unique and so rare and you can create something money doesn't care what color you are you will stand out mm. so i think the time is right why is it important for more young people in africa and the african diaspora to be involved in science and technology this is no time to be left behind the world is online. Digital transformation is here. And if you are not where the life is, jobs are, opportunity is, addressing global challenges are, then you're left behind. And if you're left behind, that means you don't have jobs. That means you don't have money. That means you are a group that we have to make sure we bring on board because you have some innovative abilities and creative solutions to add to the world. So it's not just coming on board to see what you can get. You can bring and add solutions to the table. I'm aware of these opportunities that you've mentioned, but I also know that one of the challenges um, for young people might be even access to things like um, the internet, um, electricity, uh, and general poverty, even to buy the devices with which they can, you know, join this uh, global uh, uh, movement, you know. So are there suggestions and solutions for so young people who are caught up in such uh, really dire situations who might have a love for, you know, getting involved in science and technology? I have worked like what, one of my, my members of my team is, is a Kenyan. My graphic artist is a Kenyan. And I know of the electricity challenges and the access to technology and the devices. 
I, I know of it and I've been to Nairobi and Mombasa a few times, so I have experienced it. But I know they've come a very long way. So I have seen technology leapfrog development. So even if you're not going to have access because of cost, because of lack of resources, because the government may not be investing as much as they should, there are NGOs, there are other initiatives that you can go online. And you might say, okay, how do I go online in the first place? I remember reading in Times Magazine sometime last year, and I know of people who've done that. They pay one hour, two hours, three hours internet, find an online cafe in their closest community, and find jobs online. And paid that much that it can take care of their families for the month. So it's kind of like what my dad said, where there's a will, there's a way. Now I know some who may be far in the country who may not have that access. So that is where people where you and I come in. We have, we create more opportunities for those who are far removed. But there are those who, it is a difficult scenario, but it's not impossible. Because mm -hmm. if there's a world, there's a way. And because of this global world, you can create partnerships and, and, and new relationships with entities all over the world that can help you get your foot in. And then there are UN organizations who are trying to push to address the digital divide. At least one out of two people do not have access to technology, to devices, to internet access, you name it. So you have like ITU investing in it, UNCTAD investing in it, and they're working with different governments. They're working with Rwanda, they're working with Nigeria, they're working with Ghana, and they're trying to put systems and businesses in place. Even ITC, International Trade Center, they work with a lot of young women who want to create businesses to help them come online. So it is difficult, and there are many challenges, because even in developed countries, children do not have tablets and devices. It's almost like you take it for granted. But where there's a will, there's a way. And you have to push back the system and tap into all the opportunities that are there. So this brings me to your charity work, because I know you've invested a lot of time and energy working with young people. So what's the name of your organization and what do you do? So I was working for a mobile operator that, that I thought couldn't get any better. I still hold them in highest regard. And uh, traveling all over the world, making an impact, making good money. And I just felt I have to make a difference. It's not about making people wealthy or enjoying life. I am socialized to give back. My mother was one who had a Thanksgiving every year, who's helping some child who's at our home staying, some family. I, I was socialized to give back. So when I left that job 2013, I came back home and I said, okay, let me see what gaps are there and how I can make a difference. And I started three NGOs, one after the other. The first was Heliconia Foundation. It is Heliconia. Heliconia Foundation, which is like a baby balise. It is actually a politically aligned organization and the first in the Caribbean that focuses on youth leadership in political decision making. So it, it has been instrumental to a lot of young people getting in very top places of leadership, whether it's ambassador, senator, ministers, because I felt that there's this huge age gap between those who are leading us and those who are being led, and our young people were not involved. You don't know about and, problems in Africa, ageism, this yes. idea that, I mean, look at how old the president of my country is, how many people in their 40s are even you know, involved in decision making. Yeah. yeah. Not to talk of younger ones, you know, people in their 30s and so on, who have a lot to offer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sorry. Which is one of the reasons I have pushed so strongly, and the Prime Minister knows I feel very strongly about this. And he has echoed that, Dr. Keith Rowley, that young people need to take a place, we will create a door for you. And one that is very close to my heart is Genesis, the movement. So Genesis focuses on education, excellence, and the elderly, three E's. Um, we want to encourage, we tend to focus on the brightest children. The child who comes first get all the prize. And I would know, I used to be one of those brightest children. But then we forget the children who are struggling. It's almost like we kick you when you're already down. So we want to focus, because my sister's a teacher, and she was sharing that these young people, they're not, they're not driven to do more, they need to work harder. And I felt they probably just need a little nudge. So we started Genesis that focus on the... The child should not make mediocrity their standard. We want to encourage excellence. So we give the, the prize to the most improved child over the school year. 
And I started off with only girls, because I'm a girl. And then the data showed that the boys also were having a bigger challenge with that. So we extended to the boys and girls. Every year we give to the most improved boy and the most improved girls. We started in 2013. We have we launched it. Or Pardon? Secondary or primary yes. or tertiary institutions? Yes. 14 schools, seven, secondary, seven primary schools, six secondary schools. And last year, I'm so pleased to say, I launched with my alma mater, one university. Uh, but the university program is a little bit different. It's for girls who chose to specialize in a program, a bachelor's program of IS, ICT. And then another friend who's an alumni as well joined me. So he's sponsoring one boy. But starting from this year, he's sponsoring one boy from any Caribbean country who is excelling in ICT. And we are, if I'm sponsoring a girl, he's sponsoring a boy. And we want to encourage that. We want to encourage more people to, because there still are very few scholarship opportunities for some of these children. Trinidad and Tobago is quite fortunate. We do have GATE, which is a government-assisted program for tuition. But you still have to cover your own living expenses. Depending on the homes you come from, you are disadvantaged. So Genesis has been on my heart and my mind for the last seven years. And because of COVID, we have given out our love baskets to families who have been in need. And we started a small project called Students Online. So we have been sourcing tablets and PCs to give to students across the country who might not have devices. So tablets, PCs, it has been slow, but that has been the push. And it has been more... Individuals? Do you source them from individuals? Individuals and companies. Okay, and companies, okay. So because I come from the yeah, field that I... Part of their CSR. Yes. Social responsibilities for companies. Okay. Because I came from the field of ICT, and I know a number of them who are CEOs of the telecom companies now, I've reached out. The challenge I've had is that they have been focusing on providing access. So their priority is not devices. Oh. It's more access. Okay. So that had either been the parents buying for their children, or the schools might do a fundraiser and help them there. But you do find certain schools do not have the resources. And so children are being left behind. And now I'm seeing us morphing into that whole thing, encouraging boys and girls to choose ICT. And even want to push our ministries of, techno of education to see the importance of technology because COVID is an eye opener. And we, nearly, we really need to prepare for the fourth industrial revolution. Otherwise, we as a country will be left behind. Join me next time on the Sankofa Pan-African series. Don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. Please feel free to share with your friends.